Hi ladies, welcome to the Feminine Universe. I am so happy to have you here. Today we're going to be getting right into what exactly you can do if you don't feel attractive or if you're struggling with feeling attractive. I already have a couple of fun videos up on boosting your appearance basically overnight, but in this video, I'm going to take it one level deeper with you guys. For some of us, feelings of attractiveness ebb and flow. Sometimes they're up high and sometimes they're kind of low, but for some people, it's a more persistent thing, something they've always struggled with or have been struggling with for a long time. Maybe feeling like the ugly duckling or the odd one out in their family or friend group, or maybe it's just struggling with feeling invisible and going unnoticed. While of course we shouldn't live for the approval of others, wanting to be recognized, appreciated, and attractive to your peers is a completely natural human desire. Anyone saying otherwise is a little misguided. So let's get started. Firstly, we are going to have to really understand what it means to be attractive because even though they are used synonymously in the English language very often, attractive does not just mean pretty. To break it down in the simplest form, to attract is to pull things, or people in this case, towards you, whereas to repel is to push them away. So simply put, being more attractive is about doing more of the things internally and externally that will pull people towards you rather than push them away. The first thing I will suggest is to zone in. What exactly is it that makes you feel unattractive? Your teeth? your weight, the condition of your skin, or is it something non-physical like a lack of confidence or feeling like you're a bit boring and it's difficult for you to add something of substance to a conversation? Are you socially awkward? Sometimes we avoid the things we don't like about ourselves the way some people treat bills they don't want to think about as something to be buried and ignored. Zoning in is also tough because we're told sometimes that acknowledging anything we don't like about ourselves is the ultimate form of self-betrayal. We're supposed to always feel flawless, but if it doesn't resonate internally, it doesn't help. So by zoning in, we realize that a lot of the times, the things that we're unhappy with are things that are within our power to work on and fix. And the best advice I have for you, if it is something you can fix, and I say this with love, stop hiding from it and fix it. And if it's something you can't change, this is where I suggest changing how you think about it. I'll use a very generic example. There are still many women caught up in their bus size or cup size. Adopting the mindset that whether you think they're too big or too small, there is someone who thinks you are just right. And yes, your opinion of yourself does not need to be shaped solely around what people think. But when we're talking about attractiveness, you have to take into consideration what pulls other people in. The next thing I will suggest is to do everything within your power. Sometimes when people don't feel attractive, they develop this why bother mentality. You have to get rid of that mindset. That's kind of like saying, well, if I can't be a 10, no use in being a 6 or a 7. I'll just stay as a 4. It doesn't make any sense. No matter how your genetics are set up, there are things we can all do. Taking care of our basic hygiene, doing our hair in a flattering way, keeping our nails done, taking care of our skin, dressing well for our body types. I'm not telling you these tips are going to make you Naomi Campbell or Beyonce or Gigi Hadid, but the version of you that's doing all that's within their power is absolutely going to be more attractive than the version that's not. You with white teeth is going to do more to pull people towards you than you with yellow teeth. Don't leave anything on the table that's within your power. I'm sure we'll all agree that Sofia Vergara is gorgeous gorgeous, but these are both pictures of her. I'm sure the crazy looking one was for a role, and I think you can see if she decided to stop taking care of herself and go out any which way, that would detract from her appearance even if her physical features didn't change at all. The next thing I would suggest is to focus on your fitness. I don't know anyone who has a healthy relationship with their fitness who is just completely unhappy with their appearance. They might exist, but I don't know any of them. In general, we have more control over our bodies than our face. 
the features you're born with are more or less the features you're born with but you can sculpt your body through eating well and exercise and having a great body that you put in work to achieve and reclaiming control in that area will definitely boost your confidence some try to say that being attracted to fit bodies is just shallow but what i think gets overlooked is that when you look at someone who is fit you are subconsciously registering the fact that they regularly exercise and that they probably eat decently on a regular basis and that conveys hard work discipline and consistency which are all attractive qualities that you'll be giving off subconsciously and we can't forget about the feel-good hormones you're also releasing on a regular basis with each workout so do not overlook fitness on your journey to feeling more attractive my next tip would be to work on your package work on the entire package of what makes you you the only time your looks are the sole thing that matters are in a 2d situation like a picture but real life is in 3d you commute you go to work you go out to dinner you run errands you're in real life way more often than you're trapped behind a screen or in a picture in person there is so much more you can convey and you to your advantage so yes work on all that you can in regards to your appearance but also work on your little things that make up your package the qualities that are unique to you things like your laugh is it warm and infectious does it make other people want to laugh is it a cute little giggle that people can't wait to get out of you again or your walk do you have a sachet that breaks necks and exudes confidence or you can learn to make your eyes dance or sparkle creating that magnetic eye contact that people can't and don't want to pull away from. You can use interesting vocabulary that is attractive in an auditory way because it breaks from the same old same old words that people hear from everyone. Does that event sound good or nice or does it sound lovely? Does it sound incredible? There are so many things that can be attractive that don't depend on your physical appearance. In corporate terms these would be called your intangibles. These are the things that are useful but are not physical that you can't quite measure or put your finger on but definitely make a difference. My next tip for you would be try not to do unattractive things on purpose. This part might be a little controversial, but it's necessary. I have a theory that when really pretty people do ugly things, they're almost subconsciously saying, look, I'm so pretty, I can do this ugly thing and still be pretty. Now, I might be completely off base, but that's just my theory some of the times. Also with celebrities, these people are real life humans going through things that we don't know about and they're coping how they can. Celebrities are also paid to start certain trends or promote certain products. It's part of their job to shock us and give us something to talk about and to influence the culture. They are the original influencers. So just because they do something doesn't mean it's cute and certainly doesn't mean we should copy it. I've noticed this mistaken idea of the proximity to prettiness. For example, Cassie is pretty. Cassie shaved the side of her head. If I shave the side of my head, I'll look more like Cassie and therefore be more pretty. Now that logic is flawed in more ways than we have time to get into, but simply put, it doesn't work that way. And just because a celebrity does something doesn't mean it's attractive by default and does not mean we should try to pull it off especially if it's something that's conventionally considered unattractive. Now, if you like said trend, absolutely do your thing. I'm speaking more about people thinking if a pretty celebrity is doing it, then it must be good by default, whether it's my thing or not. Especially if your concern is to be more attractive, I would say be wary of doing ugly trends on purpose. My next tip would be to remember that confidence is key. Don't roll your eyes just yet. I'm not going to tell you to go chant in front of the mirror, even though I do believe that there are benefits to positive self-talk. 
but the type of confidence I'm going to break down here is knowing what you deserve even when you might not personally believe that you deserve it just yet. Let's use a corporate example here. Let's say you've been paid $60,000 at your last two jobs. You were doing way more than you were supposed to and bending over backwards and they told you that was the cap you could get is $60,000. Now you land a new job at a new place with the same title and they're offering you $150,000 for what you've been doing. It might feel like a lot and maybe even too much because you've worked for so much less for so long. But what you need to know is that this is market rate for what you do and everything before that was underpaying and undervaluing you. That's the kind of confidence I want you to bring to your interactions. It doesn't matter what you've accepted in the past. You deserve more than being spoken to any which way. You deserve more than last minute invitations. There is a base level of respect you deserve as a human being, period. The next time someone forgets that and tries to treat you as an afterthought, you decline. Even if you have nothing to do and you want more than anything to say yes, let them wonder what you're up to that made you decline. Being scarce is attractive, especially when they don't seem to understand how to appreciate you. My last tip would be to travel and expand. Regardless of what anyone wants to say, there is something about people reacting positively to your mere existence over and over again. It does something to significantly boost your self-esteem. Very physically beautiful people learn this and get this benefit very early on. As babies and children, they are held and fawned over more and shown possibly preferential treatment. As they get older, they are shown more attention by the opposite sex. And that is one of the major things, whether they realize it or not, that affects their perception of themselves and boosts their self-esteem. But what some people fail to realize is someone who is average or even undesirable in one place can be wildly attractive somewhere else. There are places where a larger nose or higher forehead is considered regal, where a little more weight is sexy, where certain skin tones and eye colors are coveted and revered. A British man I worked with expressed to me how American women just can't get enough of him because of that accent. He's done absolutely nothing to change his look since moving, yet still went from being average in London to having a bit of an advantage and being a bit exotic in New York. I'm sure tons of Brits in the States can relate to this because Americans seem to love them some English accents. Now, I'm not saying everyone should leave behind everything they've ever known, pack up and move, leaving their friends and family behind. But maybe visiting some other countries can broaden your perspective and I understand that traveling is still not always accessible to everyone and this is why I say travel and expand. By expanding, I mean maybe going to different places than the ones you've been going to since high school. Where are you going to college if you're in that stage? Where are you living post-college? Are you hanging out in the same town at the same spots every weekend? This is rough, but sometimes people get typecasted and categorized a certain way at some point in their life and it's so tough to shake that so they remain pigeonholed where other people classified them years ago also who are you hanging out with this one might sting a little as well in my day-to-day -day life I do advise both men and women and one of the men I was advising would be considered conventionally attractive but was very concerned about his height he was about 5'8 not the tallest but certainly not tiny as we talked more I came to understand that both his brothers were over six feet tall. So in comparison to them, he was always the short one. Some might feel like the oddball out when several siblings or friends have a very obvious desirable trait that you don't have. And you would probably feel a whole different kind of energy going out alone sometimes or with friends with a similar aesthetic to yours. And of course, I'm not saying you should never go out with the people who look different from you, especially if they're close friends and family who you enjoy spending time with, I'm just recommending you give yourself time and space here and there to bask in having your own type of attractiveness appreciated. And as you get more stable in your own attractiveness, the differences may not even bother you as much. 
So when I talk about traveling and expanding, I'm just suggesting you try different places and different circles. Sometimes our perceptions of ourselves are shaped by the people around us. Changing those people and places, even for a little bit, might change our perceptions. That was my take on seven things you can realistically do if you don't feel particularly attractive right now. I hope this was helpful for anyone who needed it. And if you're interested in how to disappear for a bit, work on yourself, come back on the scene and leave jaws on the floor, check out this next video. Until next time, ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.